It's Brian Preston, The Money Guy. Truth is, the most important thing I can do with the wealth I've built up, for me, is to give it to charity that I really believe in. And so that's really, really core to what I'm about. And so I, I love doing charitable things where it involves volunteers Mm -hmm. and I'm able to leverage my money and use the multiplier effect. Like I'm really big into Habitat for Humanity, which creates, it's the perfect kind of charity to me because it creates independence and home ownership and people get a house at a deal because of the volunteer labor. And so having money to be able to put towards that is really important to me. And there are other things like that that I do that or charitable, that's what really excites me. I mean, look at my eyes when yeah, I was yeah, talking yeah, about absolutely. that. I got so excited. And if, if I spent a lot of money on stuff, then I wouldn't have the money to, to be able do to do that those kind of, kind of, stuff, of things yeah. that are really important to me. And I don't want my kids, I have three kids, <clears throat> they will never inherit enough money that they would lose incentive to be productive mm-hmm. and contributing citizens. And so money beyond an amount that gives them like a booster shot in life will be given away. You know, that's one of my biggest questions because I have two young children and, uh, you know, Lord willing, they they won't have the traumatic experience that I had or what sounds like what you had growing up. But one of the things I want to make sure I do is I do pass along like sound, just money, decision-making, behavioral principles to them. How are you able to do that? Or what, what tips would you give our listeners <laughs> about like, hey, here's how you raise kids that are smart, you know, yeah. maybe in like a Clark smart by, sort of way. way. Clark literally wrote this book. This is when we met in 2005. I had him sign this book, and you wrote it to my daughter. By the way, she was less than two years old. Now she's a senior in high school, already 18. It, time flies. But literally, you wrote the book, so has it worked? So it didn't feel like it was working while my kids were growing up. You don't know what they're absorbing okay. or not. And I remember my oldest was in an economics class at college, and she was at college back in uh, the early 2000s. And the professor asked something, and she said, well, wouldn't the best thing for someone to do be opening a Roth IRA? And the professor said, yes, that would be the right thing. (laughs) And the other students were like, what's a Roth? What's she talking about? (laughs) What is she talking about? And she called me, and she said, Dad, I got to tell you about this. And so you don't know what the thick head of a teenager yeah. or a preteen is actually uh-huh. absorbing. But I, with all my kids, they all learned unit pricing when they were in mm-hmm. elementary school. Yeah. I taught them that because there was just a story I read recently about how people don't know how to comparison shop. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter what age they are. They don't know how to use these simple tools that are out there to get the best deal, not what Amazon tells you is a deal, yeah, yeah. but what really is a deal. And that's something I equip my kids with. And other things I didn't realize they were getting absorbing. But all three of my kids, as teenagers, my rule was that when they they all had to start working when they were 15, because okay. Okay? that was the age that you could start having a real job, and that any money they saved from their job I would do what I call the mommy-daddy match. I would match dollar for dollar what they did not spend from their job in a Roth IRA. So all three of my kids had their Roth starting at 15. My son was a lifeguard, his first real job when he was 15 last summer, and he now has his Roth IRA, and the kids get it because they see the accounts. I have them see the statements, and now my... 33-year-old, she's about to turn 33, has quite a hefty Roth yeah. from having started at 18 years old. So it's a matter of trying to get a message to kids and teaching, not preaching, because a parent, you know, as a parent, yeah, we, we preach. We struggle with preaching a lot. We need yeah. to teach. And then they absorb what they absorb, and you hope they develop habits because it's all about habits in life, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We develop really terrible habits in all different ways in our lives, or we develop good ones. You know, one of my habits that upsets Krista, who you mentioned earlier, is that I drink a lot of Coke Zero. 
And yeah. she's really worried about what those chemicals are going to do for me. <laughs> and what I say is that all those preservatives, I mean, I won't need embalming when I'm dead. I mean, I got them all in me. I've absorbed so many. But anyway, the point is, is that we, we over time develop good and bad mm -hmm. habits. And it's really about positive reinforcement of the good habits mm -hmm. that our kids have.